I'm Damien Chong, the OCP Nixup project lead from Meta. And today I'm going to talk about the OCP Nix 3.0, the presence and the future. A little bit of background on the timeline. So in 2020, we have come up with the OCP Nix 3.0 Rev 1.0 spec. It has a simplified form factor of two form factors, which small form factor and large form factor, that each supports the 16 PCI Gen 4 and the 32 PCI Gen 4. All of them has increased power envelope, better serviceability, as well as better manageability compared to OCP MAS 2.0 that we have. And a year later, we added the capability to the spec, which we ref to 1.2 it added PCI Gen 5 support in the same form factor. It also have some this added information about the SI budget definition. Since we are in the small form factor, we could do slightly lower budget compared to PCI cam in some insertion loss. And then to tackle some of the challenge that come along with higher speed, we introduce one more form factor which is the tall small form factor, basically the 2.7 millimeter taller height, but the same XY dimension into the spec. And this year, we largely focus on how to support these two new addition, the PCI Gen 5 through the thermal test fixture modification, through the SI test fixture development, and also the tall small form factor, which is now our thermal test fixture will be able to support. And this year, we also look into something that beyond what the PCI Gen 5 is. We look into PCI Gen 6, what it takes us to get there. And we also look at some of the improvement in speed for the hour band. Take a step back to look into a little bit of the OCP Nix 2.0 ecosystem. The picture here is shown is one of the protocol analyzer that when we have some failure, we might want to do some debug. And then another picture here is something we can use for signal integrity measurement, measurement insertion loss, for example. And of course, the ecosystem consists of NICs, for sure. And of course, another one, the server, which consists of the NICs. So typically, when I show all this picture in, in the past, is we always have to find from our 16 initial CLA members that's all their system, and we show it in the demo and all those things. But I can tell you that all these four is not from the 16 CLA members. I'm very proud of that because the OCP 2.0 has finally crossed the technology adoption chasm. It's no longer just supported by the 16 initial founding members. It's now moving to mainstream. It's now a sustainable business by itself. And I think that's a good achievement for most of the people sitting on the floor today. And talk a little bit more detail in the 2022. A couple of things that I mentioned, now it's a bit more in detail. So the tall small form factor thermal test fixture is a modification from our existing one. By just changing three of the things, we can convert it to support the PSFF. The mechanical files is currently in the wiki, or you can go and download it to develop one by yourself. And we also have initially when we designed the thermal test fixture, it is supported through PCI Gen 3 and Gen 4, as you can see earlier. And we have found a way to get Gen 5 to work, and it's currently under testing. For PCIe Gen 5 test fixture, just like PCIe CAM, we also do have our own CLB compliance load board and CDB compliance baseball. When the, we first developed our Gen 5 CLB, we do find some issue regarding con discontinuity. And um, Dell has helped to update the design, and now we have Rev2 in testing. The compliant baseboard leveraged some of the features from the CDB, so we want to make sure the testing is good before we tip out. And for next generation, we look at the PCI Gen 6 and also a faster speed of the uh, our band, uh, RBT. I will talk more in subsequent slides. So regarding PCI Gen 6, our team of um, members have taken a look into what it is support. 
and how do we support? It looks like the trend is we can support it through the same connector, the SFFTA1002 that we has been chosen five years ago. And Kyle from TE gonna have a presentation around this area um, in the next two session, if you stay in the room. However, we do find some things like, for example, the insertion loss parameters and the crosstalk of the 64G PAM4, which is what the PCIe Gen 6 uses, is yet to be in this SFFTA1002 spec. Insertion loss, we have a pretty good idea. It's basically just based on accuracy frequency. We know what we want to, to, to write inside there. For crosstalk, is something that we still need to discuss within the group, how much is suitable to be in the spec. As mentioned, we also look into the higher hour band speed. We target initially is more than 100 megabits per second. We, how, we look at 1G. How do we solve 1G? Maybe we have an RGMI or SGMI. Um, maybe USB 3 to IMI kind of a converter. All of this, we will look at, we do have one challenge. We don't have enough spare pin to support. So when PCIe 6, PCI 6, sorry, come up with a 6.0 cam spec with ref 0.5, it does include USB 2 for some of those features and functions. It gives us an idea Maybe we should look at USB 2. Maybe it's not a bad idea. Maybe 480 megabits per second is good enough. So this is something that we look at. When we look at this solution earlier, we say that backward compatibility is a priority for us. But the more we go and study this and the more we talk to the, our ecosystem partner, it became a must have. We will not break the compatibility just because of our band. With this, the trend for the supporting PCI Gen 6 and our band, we're looking into the same three form factor, the small form factor, large form factor, and the torso factor to be no change. There's this trend. But that said, we do have some of the things that emerging that we want to take a second look into it. That's why it's trending, it's not a confirm. Some of the long-term future works we're gonna look at. When we first have a productized 400G NIC, and we also think that this could also apply to the 800G NIC, is we have started to use, move away from the QSP, we look at the QSP GD, we look at OSFP. The ASIC placement is a challenge. Why so? Because when we first coin this small factor design, we assume the small the QSFP and then ASIC and Goldfinger in this kind of form factor. But when we use QSP DD, while the cache pluggable doesn't change, the PCB footprint to get the signals is actually slightly longer. So this created a challenge whereby the ASIC especially one of the ASIC that we, we gonna in the case study, do have a challenge to place between the cage and the go finger. That resulted the ASIC to kind of move, shift it to the side, and then um, cannibalize the ability to have a second cage in the OCP next form four vector. And then since then, the sideband has also evolved. We have a bit more sideband nowadays, um, I3C, maybe I3C is actually became more popular. Uh, of course, we have USB 3, which it doesn't have in definition of the OCP next year as well today. Um, how about PAST-T? The DCMHS group has come up with a PAST-T, a new sideband tunneling interface that you probably will hear more tomorrow. And how about Smart NIC? I, the, I think the this is currently, if, if folks are designing system and server, you probably know that the smart NIC today are not, generally not on the OCP NIC form factor. This, we look at it, probably two reasons for it. First of all, the small form factor is a bit too small to implement some of the ASIC and the DRAMs. And then the second part is the large form factor, well, it's big enough 
but not a lot of server actually has that. So if we have a chicken and egg problem, maybe we want to look at something different. I give you a bit of teaser here, what we're looking at. If you like it, let us know. If you don't like it, let us know as well. So this is the small hole factor and lateral factor from the OCP next 3.0. And well, we could have a Nick 4.0 that's non-compatible, but keep the same size, but I don't think that's a good idea. What if we look at something a bit longer fit th that able to fit some of the smart Nick use cases? Of course, from a server perspective, like, whoa, you cannot eat into my space now. And then um, if we were to go there, Maybe how do we maintain compatibility between the, the server that designed for NIC 4.0, but we actually have a NIC 3.0 that we want to plug in, maybe an adapter card. So those are the things that we are looking at, discussing. Um, it's far from anything that a conclusion, but we would like to get the feedback from the community on what's your thought, and of course, join us in all these discussions. We do have a booth in the OCP Experience Center. Do come over and talk to us. We do have like the server, we do have the NICs, the connectors and cables. Um, yeah, some are running live demo, some are static demo, and please come and join us. The call to action is implement um, OCP NIC 3.0 in the server that you design. And I'm very thankful that DCMHS is using the OCP NIC 3.0 solution. That's a good thing. And send us feedback through our feedback form, tiny URL, feedback to OCP Nick. It's kind of easy to remember. And also join our discussion every first Wednesday of the month. That's the last of the, my slide. And I know we're running a little bit late, um, but if you have a question, you can ask me when we, ship, when we uh, swap presenter. Next, I would like to in, invite Hamel and John to come and talk about the details of the specs.